how to use text in Affinity Photo to create some amazing sub brushes. To create something like this. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to create that again. It's always a loads of different steps, but you can use text in all kinds of ways to create something like this. Simply go over here and just create some text. So just create some text and save it. Save it as a PNG file. So there you can use a frame, frame text. You can also use artistic. I'm going to go for artistic and simply add some text. So text, very simple, like that. Now you can add obviously layer effects to it. You can add filter effects to it. You can change colors, create multiple this text, maybe a text with a stroke around it, and so on. And of course you can apply it maybe at different angles, up to you. Key thing is, once you've got your design, simply go to File and Export, because you want PNG files for sub brushes. So PNG format, I think JPEG, etc. is also okay. I normally go for PNG and simply go to Export. And you know, so I've got some PNG files already there, so go for number seven, PNG, and save. So you've got the design there. Now, what you can do, just gonna go back to this document and I'm going back to a fresh document there. Now I wanna create a brush with this. Now I'm gonna start from a starting point, one of these brushes. So you can see there, I've got a start brush there. Well, what I want to do is I wanna go over here and I wanna duplicate it. So right click and I wanna duplicate that brush. I wanna use that brush as start point. Right down here, and I'm going to rename this brush. This is going to be a text brush. Text brush one. Obviously, at the moment, it's not very much like a text brush at all. It just applies it green, but I'm going to vary it now because what you can do, right click there, you can edit the brush. You can also maybe go up to more, but edit brush. And it comes up with this panel. And you can see what the brush is made of at the moment. A couple of sub brushes already. So you can delete those, you can go here, select it and remove. Select it, remove. You don't have to, of course, but you've got that basic brush there now. What you can do, you can add bitmaps. bitmaps. So add bitmap and you've got this one. This is a frame one, created this earlier, obviously. Open and at this point, you can't see much in the brush. You can't see anything, but you can edit it. Simply select it. So select that and then click edit and you can modify the size. Now that, that one does actually create quite a lot of messy. So if you want sort of like a noise effect, I think frame is really quite good because you can a lot of text and you can make it a real sort of massive. And of course you can also rotate it. You can also add dynamics. So you've got size jitter. So again, you've got the, that edits the, the sub brush. There, you can actually see the result combined with the actual brush. Also, you can still, at this point, you can even apply it as well. So you can see the result there, if you want to do that. But I'm just going to continue to add. So you can add some accumulation, so you can make some sort of lighter in certain points, how it accumulates. Flow jitter, modify that. Rotation, so you can make it rotate. You can also add pressure rotation, if you want. So you can get some nice effects there or random. You can also vary things like here with the size. Click there. And you can see you can vary the size, make it smaller, bigger, and a whole variety of different designs. And there's some profiles that you can use already. Also, you can add some hue jitter and saturation jitter. So you can then get some like changes of color in there and close. So you've got your design there. And you can apply that. And you can see it's quite an interesting looking brush but you can also add more than one thing. So you can go to add bitmap, and I'm gonna go with maybe, yeah, I'll go with that one. So you've got a sort of design that's with a stroke, and it's obviously a white background for the uh, type or text. Click open. Now you can click there, and also you can use it as rays, so you can see what happens, it cuts through. Can't really see it much because, let's click edit just increase the size a bit and then close. You can see what happens when you go for arrays, it cuts through or it adds on top, blends there. Arrays, blend. 
also you can change and that's very subtle but they, it actually does have effect when you actually use this occasionally you can look at it and it does radically change brush so it should not be ignored he said i'm just going to go with at current nozzle so it's applied just there and then now could go with erase but i'm just going to go with blend but i want to edit it Click edit there, and again it brings up the sub brushing. And again, you can see only that one, two, one, two all the way through. And you can modify the size, you can make it bigger. Okay, you see the result there. Also, accumulation, make it reduce or there, and rotation, if you want to rotate it, or go to dynamics. You can also go with texture, also add texture to it as well. So you can also have texture, which is type as well. So you can really create some very unusual designs. Modify it. size jitter again. You can click there, maybe make it different sizes, different places. Close that and flow jitter. Also, you can modify the rotation so it sort of rotates and also you scatter so you can make it sort of spread out or scatter X so it spreads out that way in random positions. Hue jitter again, luminosity jitter, and you can see color there. And you can close that. Now I'm going to add the one that I added just at the bottom, or maybe a couple other ones. So add bitmap, and then there's another one you can so you can create text obviously with like three, or maybe this one, a blurred one in green. Again, select there, edit, and you can see the effect there. And again, you can modify rotation, so you see the result there. You can also add blending mode, so you can go with darken, lighten, and dynamics again. Go over the hue and jitter, so you can sort of vary there, you can see. Or maybe use this again, so you can just modify. And make it different areas. And again, where's the other? Always look for rotation. I always think that sometimes it would be nice if they actually just have alphabetic order, then I could find it. So have size jitter, obviously that's the most important one, but it's just it would be nice in some ways to have it alphabetical. And again, you can see it, size going up or down, the jitter, and again, hue, size, jitter, to get some color into that. And you can see, again, creating quite an unusual, you can see the type there. And again, if you want to, you can always, for that one, you can always go for a raise. So it will cut through it. Up to you if you want to use that. I most time always use the blend. You can also move these around. So you might think, oh, put that one up above the other one, move that one down there, and so on. So you can shift them around how they layer on top of each other. And of course, the blending modes, etc. And also now what you can do, add bitmap, just to finish it off. I just go to down here to the one that I just created earlier. So there's the type brush. And again, just go there. And in this case, edit again. Always remember to click edit. Change the size. And you can see that again on that there. Obviously you've got the, the actual text there. Change accumulation, flow, and rotation. Blend most if you want. Dynamics again, size, flow, scatter and rotation. So you're making quite a bit of a messy but I just want to show some of the different settings that can be done. Hue jitter and again luminosity close. And of course once you've done all that you can obviously modify the actual brush as well. So change the size that and you can of course change dynamics for that as well. Size jitter obviously set to maximum. Rotation for that. You jitter for that as well, if you want to change that. So you can create all kinds of really unusual ones. Of course, you've got your sub brushes there. You can also add textures. So if you don't want that texture, you can always remove it. Obviously you can't. Doesn't want to go. That's the base texture, clicking the wrong one. That doesn't help. Well, that's it. So pressure, oh, that's strange. You can add, add. Well, oh, this is add some type. So you can see that now, ah, you can remove it now. So you can, you just have to have one texture for it. Actually, I'm surprised they don't offer the option where you can just set, sort of blank it out. Very strange. 
and mode, nozzle, and final, you vary that. You've obviously got a very complex brush there, but it's, you know, it's, I'm just showing some of the examples of the things you can do with type. And of course, in Affinity Photo, that's yeah, and I would love to see it. It'd be nice if painter nozzles could be available. I would love to see that feature. But until that, this is quite a great way of adding certainly a whole range of different sort of designs like this very quickly to your brush stroke. And of course, you can see your brush there. There's your brush design. And of course, you've got all these other options as well. So you can change the width. And then you can really fill the screen massively with that type. When you change the flow, you can change all these other settings as well. Maybe you can also you want symmetry. So I'm just going to put that down to quite a low value. Set symmetry on, and I've got seven there. And then you can see what you can do. You've obviously got the symmetrical effects there. Though I must admit, when it comes to type, it doesn't really make such a brilliant look. But that's it, just run through that. And again, I've put that all the way back so you can actually see the brush stroke. There's the design there. And of course, you can always go and vary the color here. Now, in some cases, it might make hardly any difference. An orange like that, brown. Yeah, the end result, hardly any difference because of all the different settings. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Always adding new tutorials about Finity Photo, Finity Designer, Painter, Photoshop, Illustrator, and many, many other applications. Also, if you've got any questions, anything you would like to know, maybe explore further in these sort of sub brushes and text, please let me know. Also, things I've done wrong, please let me know about that. I'm always happy if people put comments saying, you know what, that didn't work in the way that I thought it would work. Well, I can obviously always investigate and check it out. Also, a dislike or like. Thank you much.